All right, so, um, all right, well, you have me this morning. <laughs> so, um, I, God gave me this message before I knew exactly when I was going to be speaking, but, so I just wrote it down, I'm like, ooh, that's good, so, uh, so I'm sharing what God revealed to me. It may not be earth shattering to you, it just really enlightened me, and so, um, a lot of times when God does that, that's what I'm supposed to share, so that's what I'm going to do. So we are going to talk about a guy named Joseph, and, and I know I've talked about him before, and I like talking about Joseph because there's many things that you can learn from his story. You, um, you learn forgiveness. You know, how many of you guys know Joseph had to walk through some things and forgive a lot of people? And so you learn to forgive. You learn how he walked in love. You learn how he persevered. And there's just so many things about his story. Each time I read it, I, I just, God reveals something else to me. And, um, I, and if you, and I just want to, a little blurb for Pastor Brian here. <laughs> if you, if you guys are not doing the, uh, the read the Bible through one year plan, uh, definitely get, get into that. That is a cool thing. And I've done it for several years. This year I am on track to do it twice. I've already went through once and I'm on track to go to twice. And that is my goal for the year. And, uh, so, and it can be done. And I am a single mom of two that have to go everywhere. <laughs> And I still get it done, so everybody's got, got time to do that. But, um, but anyway, um, you know, and I've read the story multiple times, you know, and so uh, I've already read it once this year, and so, or, so as I was reading it again, God just kind of really enlightened a couple things, and that's what I want to share with you. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, here we go. We are going to uh, start out in Genesis chapter 37. That is where... Joseph's story starts, and we're going to start in verse 2. We, we are going to do a lot of reading, so everybody bear with me here, okay? We're not going to read the entire story, but here in the beginning, we're going to, we're going to start out. So Genesis chapter 37, we're going to start in, uh, um, we're going to start in verse 3, and, uh, and this is where Jacob is, uh, um, he's, he's come back from, I can't remember exactly where he was, but he was in his in his uncle's land, and he came back and met Esau, and then he came back and he's he set up roots, you know, where he's at, and all his sons have come with him, and so um, and so in and how many you know Jacob had twelve sons, and they are what, what 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 did Jacob's twelve sons be end up becoming? The twelve tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, right, right. So, um, so his, his sons were pretty important guys, right? Right. So, um, and so, and of course, said previously through the story, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. So starting in verse three, it says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that the father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And could not speak peaceably unto them. So Joseph, like we talked about Joseph, Israel had 12 sons. And Joseph was the second to youngest. So he was, what, 11th in line? And so out of all 12 of his sons, he loved Jacob the most. Now, you know, we're not supposed to love one child more than the other. But Jacob made it known <laughs> that he loved Joseph. So all the other brothers were pretty, pretty upset over that, right? Yes, they were. Okay, and then in verse 5, it says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet even more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you the dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood around about and made a... All right, Bonnie, what is that? A... The basis, thank you, to my sheep. Okay, so he's saying he had his sheep, and then all of them were circled around him, and then all of them bowed down to his to his sheep there. That didn't make him even more popular. <laughs> and so, um, and, okay, and starting in verse 8, it says, And his brethren said to, to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Shall you have indeed have domination over us? And they hated him yet, the more for his dreams and for his work. So it said they already hated him. Then they hated him even more. Now they hated him even more. That's a lot of hate. 
But but how many of you know the Bible says that we're we're and this is a little sidelight lesson that we're not to to throw our pearls before swine. You know, it says that in the New Testament, and that's what he did. He shared a prophetic dream that God had given him to people that weren't ready to hear that at that time. So, little side nugget there. Okay, and um, verse 9, and it says, And then he dreamed yet another dream, and didn't learn the first time, so he told it to him again, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made abeyance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And the brethren envied him, and his father observed the same. So so his father, so Israel rebuked him because he's like, Who are you? Why what makes you think that we're all gonna bow down to you? So again, he took another prophetic dream and, and he shared it with people that that weren't ready to receive it or weren't meant to, re to receive that dream. But how many of you know God had a plan? Yeah. Even though Jacob messed up, not once but twice, not Jacob, then night, Joseph, <laughs> um, I wouldn't even say messed up. He just shared what he should because he was excited because the Lord showed him something, you know, so he's excited and he loved his brothers. He loved his father and he's like, hey, look, God spoke to me. Here, check this out. And, you know, and of course they didn't receive it, but God had a plan, even though they didn't receive it. I just want you always, just through, through everything that I'm talking about, God had a plan. Okay? Just, that, I think that's my title. I couldn't find a title. <laughs> that is it. God had a plan. So, um, so, what, so life goes on, and in verse 13, uh, Israel tells Joseph, hey, go find your brothers and take them some food and, you know, go deliver it to them. So, Joseph's like, okay. So he goes off and he goes off on this trip to deliver uh, food to uh, his brothers. And in verse 23, his brothers saw him coming. And of course, remember, they hated him. They hated him even more. And they hated him even more. <laughs> so, again, a lot of hate going on. And they see him coming. And so they're like, oh, here comes that dreamer again. He's dreaming. You know, and he's got on his, his beautiful coat of many colors that, that Israel made for him. You know, which I'm sure rubs salt in the room even more. And and they saw him coming and they're like, let's just kill him. Let's just get rid of him. And so one of his oldest brothers, Reuben, uh, he's like, no, let's not kill him, you know, because then that'll come back down on us. Let's just throw him in a pit, thinking that he's going to come back later and rescue him and him out. Because remember, Israel loved Joseph more than all the rest of them, okay? So, so then, um, I can't remember, Reuben went on to go take care of some other business, and his other brothers see some uh, Midianites coming, and long story short, they sold him into slavery, okay? They sold him to, um, <coughs> to, um, to Egypt, uh, to, to Potiphar. There's a, a man named Potiphar, and he was one of the, the um, he was an officer of, of Pharaoh's, and he was a captain of the guard. So he's a pretty high guy in Egypt under Pharaoh. So they sold Joseph to, to these men. So, you know, keep remembering, God had a plan, okay? So, it, and again, it doesn't look good for Joseph, right? You know, his brothers hate him. They hate him even more. They hate him even more. And then they, they took his coat from him. They dipped it in goat's blood, told his father that he died, and then they sold him off into to slavery, into this man Potiphar's possession. So now, let's just stop there for a minute. You know, like I said, things weren't going very well for Joseph. Now, if it was you or me, what would you be thinking? You know, hello, God. <laughs> Where are you, God? <laughs> I would. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But, you know, it, it would look like God wasn't, kind of involved in there, right? In the natural. In the natural, it just appears that way. Not saying it was that way, it just appeared that way. But how many of you know, as you if you're familiar with the story, you know, Joseph didn't complain. He did he didn't, you know, say why me God. He didn't he didn't do any of that. He just kind of just went along. Because he knew God was in charge. Okay? So now as 
And verse, uh, let's see, we're still in Genesis. Oh, now we're in Genesis 39, sorry. Um, and we're going to start in verse 1. So now he's been sold, and, and he's he's in Potiphar's house. And, um, okay, and starting in verse 1, it says, And Joseph was brought down into Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him uh, of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which he brought him down to them. Okay, now in verse I believe it's two. This is very important. It says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So stop for a second. Here's a, here's a, here's a, and he was a young, young kid. Here's a young, young kid that, his brothers sold him into slavery. He and he goes into this man's house, and the Lord was with him, and the Lord made him prosper. Okay, just think. I mean, he, he's a slave, but the Lord made him prosper. So God had a plan. Okay, so just bear with me. Keep going here. Um, and then in verse four, and it said, Joseph found grace in Potiphar's sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, and he put it to his hand. So, so he's in Potiphar's house, and you know, and above it says the Lord was with him, and he blessed him. And it says that Potiphar saw that. So, you know, not only did did God bless Joseph, but He used Joseph to minister to Potiphar. Are you guys catching this? He's, you know, he's he's ministering to. Him. He's seeing how great God is, even though he's in slavery, even though he's been through all these things, God still blessed him. And because he saw that, he put Joseph in charge of everything in his house. Everything in his house belonged to Joseph except for Potiphar's wife. Everything belonged to him. That's pretty blessed. If you're, you know, in slavery, you know, that's that's definitely blessed when you're put in charge of all that. And then, um, down in, uh, let's see, verse 5, it says, um, it says, uh, he made him oversee the house, and the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So not only did God bless Joseph, but he blessed Potiphar too. You know, so how many of you know when you are serving in the house and when you are serving God and things and you're taking care of God's stuff, which Joseph was serving God, Joseph was God's stuff, Joseph was carrying out the plan and the destiny that God had for him, God will bless you along with it if you help support it, nurture it, and take care of it. You know, even in, in um, um, I can't remember what book it did, I think it was Exodus or Leviticus. No, no, I'm sorry, I apologize. Back in um, Samuel, Second Samuel, when they took the ark, when David was bringing the ark um, into the city of Jerusalem, and remember the... What's his name? Was it Uriah? That, huh? Uriah, I think is his name, touched it and he died. And so David's like, oh, wait a minute, hold on, we're going we're gonna to stop right here. And I can't remember the name of the guy, but the guy, like, thank you. Uh, <laughs> he took care of the ark before they brought it back. And his entire house was blessed. Blessed beyond measure because he took care of the ark. So see, when you take care of something that's God's, whether it be the house or, you know, the church house, whether it be the pastors, whatever it is, when you take care of it, when you put that God first, God's going to bless you. There's an offering teaching, by the way. God's going to bless you. He's going to take care of you. and those, You're going to reap from that. There's, you know, no matter how much it inconveniences you, no matter how much you think that, that whatever, if you do it with the right heart, you will reap the blessings off of that. So there's your offering teaching times too. And, uh, so um, let's go on down and um, verse 6, and it says, uh, And Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a godly person and well-favored. So Joseph is well-favored in, in Potiphar's sight. So things are going great for Joseph, right? He's blessed, Potiphar's blessed, Potiphar's happy, things are going great in his house. Um, you know, everybody's blessed and he's over everything. Here comes Potiphar's wife. 
and she, Joseph catches her eye. Not purposefully, he, he wasn't trying to do anything like that, but she, she, she sees Joseph and she has not good thoughts, you know, towards him. And so she tries to seduce him. Yeah, thank you. I was looking for an appropriate word for that. Um, she tries to seduce him. And Joseph's like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, no, we can't do that. And she tries many a times. And um, she keeps trying. He keeps telling her no. Of course, she's getting mad. And, you know, because she's been rejected and stuff. And so just, she grabbed hold of Joseph's coat, and it ends up coming off. And so she's like, I got him. So then she tells everybody that Joseph tried to rape her because she's got his coat. He's like, look, he left it. And so, you know, all of a sudden, here we go again. <laughs> Things are going crazy, and it's looking like God's not in control. It's looking like, you know, hello, God, where are you? You're blessing me. You're blessing everybody. And then this happens. How many of you guys have gone along in your life, and things are just going great, you're going good, and then, boom, something happens? And we as humans, you know, in our natural, we're like, God, where are you? What's going on? But how many of you know, like, when, you know, if, if you're living correctly, there is there is a pretext to all this. You do have to be um, submitted. You have to make God Lord of your life. And if you've done all that and you're trying your best to hit the mark and those things come, you know, and you know that you didn't cause any of those things. Because how many of you know when we sin and sometimes those, you know, those things, we have, to, you know, there's, when we do things, sometimes we have to walk through things because of the choices that we make. That's what I'm trying to say. And sometimes you have to walk those things out. But when you know you're, you know, you've done your best to hit the mark and you've not done any of that and things still happen, it doesn't mean God's not there. It doesn't mean God's not in control. It does not mean that he doesn't have your back. And, and Pastor Brian said many a times, and, and it's true, sometimes it doesn't even have anything to do with you. Not a thing, but you still have to walk through it because you have to walk through it for someone else's sake. And as we see Joseph's story continue on, it, none of this had to do with Joseph, not one ounce of it. It had to do with his destiny, what God had planned for him. Okay, so everybody, everybody still with me? Everybody still going? Okay, so, uh, so Potiphar accused Joseph of rape. No, not Potiphar. Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of rape. Goes and tells Potiphar, tells anybody that'll listen, look at this godly man. Look what he did. Look what he tried to do. Oh, poor me. <laughs> and so um, so Potiphar got angry, of course. And Potiphar could have legally killed him. I mean, he could have just killed him right there in the spot. But he got angry. And he threw Joseph into the king's or Pharaoh's jail. Now, as I was researching this a little bit, uh, they were, it said Pharaoh's jail, when you went, that was the bad jail. That was like <laughs> maximum, maximum, maximum security jail. <laughs> and so it was bad behavior jail. And so when they went to that jail, they were, they were bound. So they were, you know, there was no get to go to the yard and play basketball. There was no, you know, get to go outside for 15 minutes for good behavior. There was none of that. They were chained to, you know, they were just chained. And so, so you know, huh, Joseph's going through it again. And it's not fair. It doesn't seem fair. But again, God had a plan. And he knew that. And he knew he did his best. He served Potiphar well. He served Potiphar above and beyond. And how do we know that Joseph knew that? Because God blessed him. How do you know when you're not... When you're not doing above and beyond the thing, the blessings don't come because you're not aligned with the word. So that's how we know that, and that's how Joseph knew that that he was doing right, he was doing good, and and then boom, all this happens, and he gets thrown into this this the Pharaoh's jail. And um, <clears throat> let's see here. Hold on, I got ahead of my notes. And uh, okay, so then uh, let's go. We're going to go to verse 21, and, and it says, you know, um, uh, Joseph's in jail, verse 21. It says, but the Lord was with Joseph. 
he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So, again, here's God's favor following Joseph. You know, and, you know, you talk, you know how Pastor Ray talks about, you know, people that, that it seems like, it's like, man, nothing, nothing around you ever stinks. <laughs> you know, nothing, everything seems to go right for you. And, you know, and, and it kind of seems that way for Joseph, that everything's going right, because God blessed him every place he went. No matter, even if it was jail or if it was slavery or whatever, God blessed him, Okay. And, uh, and so now he's got favor with the jailer. And, and in verse 22, it says, And the keeper of the prison committed Joseph, Joseph's hand, all the prisoners. So he's in charge of all the prisoners now, which I find funny. You're a prisoner and you're in charge of all the prisoners. And he was in prison, and whosoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under, under his hand, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Even in prison, though God was with him, and everything he did, God made him prosper. I, that's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't know. Every every bit that I, I don't know, God just kind of really lightened that up to me, you know, because I I just read the story, you know, his brother hates me, you know, and then he goes to prison, you know, and all that stuff, and you know, and but God made him prosper everywhere he went. Even going through the trials. You know, how many, I mean, seriously, and I'm, I'm guilty of this. When I go through the trials and I go through the hard things, you know, even though God God does bless me, and, you know, but it takes me a little bit to see it, <laughs> you know, because we get so, so, we take our eyes off of Jesus and we turn them on ourselves and we have our own little pity party. And I do it myself. And, you know, and it's, I'm getting faster at, you know, getting my eyes back on the Lord and, you know, seeing where the Lord had his hand in things, you know, even, and I can do it now, even when Derek passed away, God had his hand in that a year previously. And I can look at it. I, and I can look where God was just moving things and setting things up. And, and did I go through a hard time? You bet. And, you know, were there hard times after it? You bet. But was I blessed through all of it? Absolutely. And was, you know, did I see God working in all of it? Absolutely. Was it hard? Yeah. But I knew God had a plan. I knew there was a reason for it. Now, did that come easily? No. <laughs> but it came through lots of prayer and lots of support. And, you know, but, you know, and, and we've all got stories like that. We've all got stories where we've went through things. And, and you know, we may have to look back on them and to see where God was with us and the purpose of it. Sometimes you don't see it right when you're going through it because all we can see is our little God in, in a puzzle that's, you know, huge. Everybody still with me? Everybody follow me? Everybody? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so while Joseph's in jail, he meets these two guys, and they were, they were, two, they were thrown in prison, and they were... Uh, the King James Version calls them the chief butler and the, the chief baker. Sometimes we hear him the chief cupbearer. You know, we, we've also known him as that. And these guys were thrown into prison. So they must have done something pretty bad because they're in, you know, maximum security prison. They're in King's prison. They're in bad, bad prison. And uh, so he meets these guys. And these guys are talking. They have dreams, both of them. And they have dreams, and so they, they tell Joseph their, their dreams. And, and through the Spirit of God, jo Joseph interprets them. And he's like, and he tells the, the butler, the cupbearer, in three days, you're going to be lifted out of here, and you're going to be restored, and you're going to be back into your position in Pharaoh's house, and, you know, everything's going to be great for you. So the chief baker gets all excited. He's like, well, hey, here's my dream. You know, and he starts telling him, and he's like, well, he goes, your dream means three days too, but you know, you will not be restored and you will die in three days. And that's exactly what happened. And they, they but Joseph told the, the chief butler and the, or the, the chief cut there, he's like, you know, because obviously that guy's very excited, you know, and everything. And he tells them, don't forget about me. You know, don't forget to tell me the Pharaoh and, you know, what, what took place. And the guy said, oh yeah, I, I got you. Don't you worry, I got you. When I get out there, don't worry. You got it. And so that happened, and what 
what happened? He forgot about him. And he didn't tell Pharaoh about him. So here we go again. <laughs> you know, things don't look good for Joseph yet again. And, uh, um, and so, well, let's read that verse. And it says we're still in, well, actually now we're in Genesis chapter 40. And in verse 14, he told the chief butler, But think of me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness. I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of my land of the Hebrews, and here also I had done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. And um, so verse 23, uh, it says that the, the chief butler or cupbearer did not um, did not remember Joseph to Pharaoh. And and I did I didn't realize this the many times that I've I've read this story, but in Genesis uh, 41, verse 1. It says, Joseph remained in jail two whole years. Two whole years after uh, the, the chief cupbearer butler was, was restored back to his position. And he's like, oh yeah, I got you, dude. Don't worry, I got you. And two whole years passed. Now, I'm sure everything remained the same. God still blessed Joseph. God, you know, Joseph was still, God was still with him. He's still blessed him and everything. And, um, and so, two, so then two whole years had passed, and then Pharaoh has a dream. And he, uh, I think he had, yeah, he, has, he had two dreams, actually. And so and then he called for all the, the, the magis and the magicians and all, you know, fake people <laughs> that didn't go all their, their uh, gifts, for lack of a better word, were not of God. But he calls them all and tells them all the dreams and stuff, and None of them can, can interpret them. And so, you know, Joseph's getting, getting, Pharaoh's getting flustered. You know, he's like, I, I need somebody to interpret these dreams. And then uh, all of a sudden, the chief cupbearer of Butler guy's like, oh, oh, hold on. I know a guy. Hold on. Two years later. And so he tells them about Joseph. And so Pharaoh's like, well, get this guy up here. Bring him out. Let's go. Get him out. So they cleaned him up, got him all ready. And, and so he tells uh, Joseph his dreams. And, and through the spirit of the Lord, he interprets the dreams for Pharaoh. And so he's telling Pharaoh, you're going to have seven years of abundance. You know, that everything in Egypt is going to prosper. It's just going to be seven years of abundance. And then he says, then there will be seven years of famine. So basically, everything that, that you got in those seven years is, is going to go away again. And, um, and so then in verse 33, Joseph tells him, hey, here's what you need to do. You need to get some guy that's going to be in charge during those seven years. And, and I, I fully believe he wasn't thinking of himself. I really fully believe that's not what he was thinking. But he's like, you need some guy, be in charge, be in charge, you know, Make sure that everything's stored up in that abundance. And then he's like, during the seven years of famine, this is how we're going to, you know, you can get through them. And so, so Pharaoh's like, well, you know, that's a pretty good plan. You know, that's, that's really, and he goes, and I can see that was God that gave it to you. Now, how many of you know Egyptians did not believe in God? Egyptians, they, they were very different. <laughs> and uh, to put it nicely. And so they, um, they and they they did not like the Hebrews. They did not like Israel. You know they didn't like any of them. But he's like, I see the spirit of the Lord in you. I see God working through you. And so he says, I and he's asking anybody, is there anybody else in the land that, that God's spirit is in them like like Joseph here? And so in verse, um, let's see here, uh, verse thirty nine. It's 39 and 40 in chapter 40 it says and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god hath showed thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art thou shalt be over my house and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than you so here here's a boy that told his dreams to people that that where he, he wasn't supposed to. But how many of you see his dreams, the prophecies starting to come into place here? 
you know, it's everything's starting to take place. So here's this boy had these dreams, and his brothers hated him, hated him so much they wanted to kill him, and they end up selling him into slavery, selling him into to Potiphar's house, where Potiphar's wife accused him of rape. He gets thrown into prison, and you know, and he's shackled for I don't know how long he was in prison before the cupbearer and the the butler, or not the, the cupbearer and the baker show up. But we know he's in prison two years after that. So here's all this stuff that happens to him that God blessed it all, and God used every bit of it. And then now he's right in front of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's like, I see the Spirit of God in you. I see how you persevered. I see how God has used you to, to come here for such a time as this. Just like Esther, she was called for such a time as this to save her people. And so how, how many of you can see right then and there, you know, none of that had to do with Joseph, but it had to, it, God, God was made known. His, his power and his magnificence and all of that was made known to all these people in Egypt. And, and he, you know, he, he showed them how he was, he was above all. He was, you know, above all their gods, above, you know, there was none greater than God. And, and God was made famous through this whole thing, not Joseph. And, and I think that's cool. And because... Would this have happened if Joseph would have complained and said, why me, God? Why do I have to go through this? This really stinks, God. This isn't fair, God. You know, if he would have had that attitude, none of that would have happened. And so, so Pharaoh, and, and as we read in verse 40, he put him in charge of everything. He was equal to Pharaoh in everything except for um, the throne. That's pretty cool for this little shepherd boy, teenage shepherd boy, and now he's in charge of all of Egypt. And so, I don't know, I just think that's really cool because God had a plan. And so, uh, in Genesis verse 45, um, or Genesis 45, his brothers, you know, this is during the time when the seven years of famine are going on, and his, so Israel, sends the brothers to Egypt to go get grain. We're not going to go through that whole story, but they come and go a couple of times, and Joseph immediately recognizes them. And how many of you know Joseph had a choice right there? Because here they were begging for grain, and, you know, if we don't get grain, we're going to die, we're going to perish. And, you know, in our natural selves, <laughs> serves you right, <laughs> so yeah, sold me into slavery. That's just what you get. But he didn't. He did. He had compassion on them. There's so many things to learn from this. I mean, for besides forgiveness, he had compassion on them. It does nowhere does it say he was salty or he was he was upset with them. It says he wept because he had so much compassion on them. There's a lot to be learned there. And, you know, and how many of you know, again, prophecy coming to take place because now they're bowing down to Joseph. They're bowing down to him and begging for mercy and begging for grain. You know, so his dreams, his prophecy dreams came true. And so, and again, like Bonnie said, he could have just went, told you, you know, listen to me, you know, back then when I told you, you were going to be, he didn't. He didn't do that at all. So he ends up revealing himself to his brothers, and his brothers are like, you know, big gulp, like, oh my word. <laughs> you know, here is the most second powerful man in, in Egypt, and oh, he, he had every right to kill him. You know, he had every right to put all of them to death, and, but he did. So, so in verse 5, you know, the brothers, and he could tell the brothers are really struggling there because they're like, oh dear goodness. And in verse 5, it says, um, Joseph is telling his brothers, he says, now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves. So he's like, don't be upset, don't be angry, forgive yourselves um, that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. So he's saying, you were just following what you were supposed to do, so don't be angry with yourselves because God sent me. And, and he says, for these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five more years to go, in which there, there shall neither be earring nor harvest. 
And God was God sent me before you to preserve you poster, posterity to the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. And it says now, so now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all this house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So he's telling them, they had nothing to do with you guys. Absolutely nothing. It was God that sent me. So now let's, let's just back up for a minute. Now, if God had a plan, right? He had a plan. And so if, if his brothers hadn't sold him into slavery, he would have never went to Potiphar's house. He would have never met Potiphar, probably. Odds are, I never heard, heard of a man named Potiphar. But so how many of you know that was part of God's plan? Had nothing to do with Joseph. Absolutely nothing. It was part of God's plan. So then, if Potiphar's wife hadn't done what she did, now am I saying all this is okay? Absolutely not. But but God had a plan in all of it. Because and what did what Joseph's brothers do to him? Was that okay? No. But God had a hand in all of it. How many of you know when we go through things? They don't catch God by surprise. Nothing catches him by surprise. Absolutely nothing. And so, you know, if Potiphar's wife had done what she did, he wouldn't have been thrown into prison. And, you know, and did it stink? Yes. I mean, stink is in the whole situation stuff, you know. I'm sure the prison stuff too, but, but, you know, I mean, was it not fair? No, it wasn't fair. But was God in charge? Absolutely. And then, had he not been thrown into prison, he would have never met the, the cupbearer and the baker would never have interpreted their dreams and then Pharaoh would have never known about them. And then the whole land would have perished because they wouldn't have they wouldn't have known to, you know, the seven years of famine and the, the seven years of abundance was the other way around. But so even though we go through things, even though we go through the trials and all that, God has a plan. He is in control if you let him. Now, if, if Joseph had whined and complained, then that wouldn't let God do what he needed to do. But So I just want to encourage you, when those hard times comes, and you've done everything you've could, you, you've, you know, you've, you've checked yourself, made sure there was nothing that, you know, no sin that would have caused the things that you got to walk through, and, you know, and sometimes things happen. I mean, they happen, they have absolutely nothing to do with you. But it's for the good of others. Yeah. And, you know, and, and think about it for a minute. I'm, I'm going to go way out on a limb here. But how special are you that God used you? Yeah. You know, and I know when you're going through it, it's not, you're like, okay. <laughs> but, but think about it. God's letting you go through that because he knows he can trust you. He knows that you will, you will persevere and you will, you will, even though you don't know the plan, because we don't need to know the plan. Because if we know the plan, we'll mess the plan up. Right. And so we don't need to know the plan, but we'll go along with the plan and we'll keep our eyes on God. And then we can, you know, we persevere. And then God can do what he needs to do through us. And, that, and that's exactly what happened with Joseph. Joseph didn't know the plan. Joseph didn't need to know the plan. All he needed to do was just trust God and know that God was going to take care of him. And God did take care of him. God took care of him. He not only took care of him, he took care of him abundantly. Everywhere he went, he was blessed. Everywhere he went, they were blessed. And how many of you know Egypt ended up blessed because of Joseph? You know, so, you know, and I don't I just, I'm sorry, that just got me excited. It was just, it was just cool. And so, you know, and, and I know we, we hear this verse a lot, James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. It says, count it all joy when you go through trials and temptations. And, and knowing that the, the trying of our faith work is work in patience and the patient that we let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So it says, you know, when you go through those things, take joy in that. You know, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard. You know, there's not much joy when we man passed away. You know, but but I went through the process and I trusted God. And you know, and I had to work on my patience. I had to work on my my faith and you know and my trust in God. But I came out abundantly blessed. 
you know, and there's been other situations. I know you guys, things you guys have been through. And, you know, can I share just a minute? They got prophesied that they were, they were going to be, they were coal in the moment, but they were going to be shining like diamonds. So what happens from, not coal, but what happens to diamonds before they become shiny and pretty? Yeah, yeah. What, what a great prophecy, huh? <laughs> Yay! But, but, you know, but God told you that was going to happen. So if he told you that, you know he's going to be with you. You know he's going to do, you know, all of it. He's, yes, he's going to, you know, and, and you're still going through that shine like diamonds, but. Right, right, right. But you'll be so pretty when it's done. <laughs> you'll be so pretty. But, you know, and so so just remember, you know, when, when you've done all you can do, you know, that old saying, when you've done all you can do, just stand. You just stand. You believe and you stand on the word of God. And, you know, and know God's going to be with you. And God's not making them go through their situation just for them so they can be all nice and pretty. But it's it's because, yes, it is for his glory. And that is why we go through those things. And so when the next people have to stand and go through the process, they're like, you're going to make it. You can do it. Amen. We did it. Amen. Look, you know, and you're going to be just as pretty as us. And <laughs> that may be not good words to use there, but but y'all know what I mean. But, you know, so, so just stand and trust the process. You know, but... But you have to make sure, here's the key, you have to make sure that you are in the will of God and you are lined up with the word and you are, because it doesn't work like that if you're not, you know, because, you know, so that, that is the precursor, all you out there, that is, you, you have to be lined up with the word. And if you're not, it's super simple to get lined up with the word. It's super simple to get on track and it's not this hard, big thing that you have to do. So, um, and then that verse um, in James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, in the message translation, it says, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. It's a sure gift. <laughs> so it says, Consider it a sure gift. And you know that under the pressure, your faith is force it's forced into the open so when you're under the pressure your faith is forced into the open it's forced for others to see you know how many of you know joseph joseph's faith was under pressure and it was forced into the open it was forced in there potiphar saw it pharaoh saw it the, the cup bearer the butt same guy that guy saw it you know <laughs> they all saw it. it was forced into the open and they're like, wow, there really is something to this, you know, and, and just, and I see the spirit of God at work in you. And, and it says, so don't try to get out of anything prematurely. So when you're going through that, don't try to get out of it. Don't try to get out of the process before you become a bright, shiny diamond. You know, don't try to get out of it. And it says, do, let it do its work so that you become mature and well-developed and not deficient in any way, you know. And Joseph didn't try to get it out of any, any of that, you know. He just, he knew God was with him. And he, he went through the process, and he came out shining like a diamond. And God was glorified in all of Egypt, who did not believe in God. I mean, good night. Look when, when the, um, the, uh, the Israelites were trying, Moses was, Going to Pharaoh saying, let, let him go, let us go. And then all the plagues and all that come. And they still didn't believe in God. They still didn't. But how many of you know, <clears throat> as the more Pharaoh resisted, the more God showed himself, and they definitely believed after and God was glorified. And there's you know many other situations through history where God has been glorified because somebody stayed under the pressure, they didn't leave the process, and they trusted God. And they're coming out shining like diamonds. And uh, so, so don't get focused on the problem. Keep your focus on God. And, um, and just continuously seek out God's will and God's purpose. 
And um, and then uh, what? And then in Second Corinthians verse twelve, verse nine, it says, "My grace is sufficient for you." And it says, "And in your weakness, my strength is made perfect." So you know. So again, that's that's how God comes out and is glorified and, and shined and, and is is made known. You know, that is exactly how how God was made made known in the land of Egypt. And so I so I just want to share that. I just want to encourage you. This is an encouraging thing. And and just to let you know that 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 you know it's it's all right. It's all right to go through the process. Trust God in the process. Is it not fun? No, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. But God's with you. And just like Joseph, God will bless you and he will take care of you. And, you know, it's that same saying from, uh, from glory to glory to glory to glory. You know, and that's where I get. And then, you know, and sometimes, you know, when everything's going to go great. Oh, I see it. I see God. We're going. And then we go over here. <laughs> and this is what happened with Joseph, you know. Oh, and then Potiphar's house. And things are going great. I'm blessed. He's blessed. Things are going great. And then here comes Potiphar's wife. And now he's in prison. You know, and I don't know, me, I've just been like, yeah. What did I do? Yeah, yeah. And you know, but but it's all right because God still had a plan. And so right here in prison, things are going great. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't but Joseph's blessed. Things are going great. Gets gets the butler and the baker out. Baker. Remember me? Oh yeah, got you, dude. I got you. And he immediately forgets. In two more years, he sits found in jail. Again, I've been like, <laughs> you know, but but the process. And then he came through, and he, you know, and I don't want to say life was cake after that, but but he he was found worthy. He was found um, usable for the master's use. And that's what we all should be. We all should be worthy and usable for the master's use. And, and just, okay, God, whatever you need me to do, I will do. Even though it costs me everything, I will do. Yes, sir. Can I have verse uh, Genesis 50, 20? Yeah. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is being done to save it from many lives. Amen. Amen. And he did. He saved the whole land of Egypt. The entire through through God, He saved the entire land. So, so I just want to encourage you. I hope you got something out of that. I hope that encouraged you. I know it's a story we've all heard before, but God just kind of really blew it up and just to me. And I just wanted to share that with you. You know, so even when you go through the just the really crummy stuff, God is with you. God has a plan, and you got to trust Him. He's shine like a diamond, and God's going to shine even brighter because it's not about you, right? Right? It's not about you. It's about God and God being glorified. Amen. 